New theme. Ed's getting his pencil out. He's ready to roll. He's ready for notes. And the new theme this week from my book, All In, is called Draw the Line. Last week was? Pack your coffin. This week is Draw the Line, okay? Draw the Line. Listen to this. In A.D. 44, what's A.D. stand for? Man, you guys are sharp. My previous school, you remember the Swami? He was about the only one that could answer anything in the whole room. The rest of them would have looked at me like, I don't know, coach. King Herod ordered James to be thrust through with a sword. James was one of the followers of Christ. He was first to be martyred. He was the first martyr. How about this, though? Luke, another. He was hung by the neck on an olive tree. Doubting Thomas, burned alive in India. Can I tell you something about Doubting Thomas? I'm taking a little extra time today. Let me tell you something about Doubting Thomas, okay? Everybody calls him Doubting Thomas. Do you know why? Anybody know why they call him Doubting Thomas? Say that. Yeah. So when Jesus came back from when he was, when he was resurrected and, and they told the disciples, man, Thomas said, oh, no, 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 no. Unless I see him, I'm not going to believe it. Now, people call him Doubting Thomas because of that. I don't think that was accurate. I really don't. I don't think that was accurate. I think basically what he was saying is, man, I want to see him so bad. Man, can I please see him too? Because here's why. If you go back into John chapter 11, and this is just a side note, but you ought to know this side note about him. And, and Lazarus, Jesus' friend, was pronounced dead. I don't know if you know, remember the story. Word came to Jesus, man, your friend has died. That is when the verse was said in the Bible that Jesus did what? Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Why did he weep? He just lost his friend. Now, he could have stopped that, but he didn't because he wanted the glory of God to be shown. But however, he had just gotten run out of town. They were trying to kill him in that town that Lazarus is from, and so he's left the town, and Lazarus has died. Word comes to Jesus. He's with his disciples that, hey, Lazarus has died. Jesus says, let us go back there, and the disciples said, you have lost your mind. They just tried to kill you there. And you want to go back? Every one of them said that except for one guy. Who? Thomas. Thomas says, I'll go with you. Go read it. Does that sound like somebody that's a doubter? That sounds like somebody that's all in to me. And then Thomas is burned alive in India following the gospel, sharing the gospel in India. How about that? Philip and his wife are crucified on a wooden cross. Matthew was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Bartholomew is flogged to death in Armenia. James thrown off the pinnacle of a temple, then clubbed to death after surviving the fall. How about that, man? I survived the fall, and here come the clubs. What a day that is, man. Huh? Thaddeus beaten to death by sticks. Matthew stoned and then beheaded. Peter it was crucified upside down. They tried to crucify him like they did Jesus. And you know what he said? I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord did, was. John the Beloved, only disciple to die of natural causes, but he, desired, he died on an island by himself in isolation. Let me ask you something. All of these people, you know why one of the reasons I believe the gospel is so real? Every one of these followed the man called Christ. Look how they died. Stay with me. At some point, at some point, if it was all a facade, if it was all fake, if it was all not real, if I didn't see him die and I didn't see him resurrected, if it all, if at some point, man, at some point, you can't tell me that every single one of these said, I know it's fake, and then went through this. Not one of them rebelled. Not one of them backed down and said, oh, man, I was just playing. It wasn't real. I didn't see him. I didn't see him. It wasn't real. Spare my life. Every one of them died that followed him like that. You got, come on now. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. Bounds, look, 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 me and you and J.B., and old Mason, we may all see the same story developing. 
And we might kind of write it a different way. I might have a different take on it. You might have a different take on it. But we all going to have kind of the same facts if we're being just totally truthful. You, know, you might have said, well, I, you know, I think this guy's more in the wrong than this guy. And, and I might say, well, I don't know. But, but man, the facts are going to be generally pretty much the same. And then somebody comes along and says, you know what? I'm just going to throw you off the building. I'm a group of me and my boys. We're going to throw you off a, a building because you keep saying that crap. And we don't believe it's true. We, we're going to throw you off the building. And then if that don't get you, we'll come down there and club you too. I mean, if we were just making it up, us four, we're going to say, hey, man, I was just playing. I, I was just playing. That wasn't, I, I really didn't see all that stuff. Not one of them. Not one of them called a timeout. I'm just saying. Why would they do that? I'm going to speed up. Because the God we serve says, man, I'll take your blame for everything you did wrong. And I'll give you credit for everything I did right. That's what God says to you, to me. I'm going to take everything you've done wrong and I'll just give you credit for everything that I've done right. Let me put my cards on the table. Where is it? Where, where's my cards on the table? I don't know where Will is. He's all over the spot. What? Oh, let me put my cards on the table. I don't think anyone has ever sacrificed for God without receiving more than they gave up. Judgment day comes for all of us. We'll all stand there. I think our regret will be whatever we didn't give back to him. Happiest people I know are the ones who give the most away. And then the more you enjoy what you have. Hey, destiny is not a mystery, man. It's a decision. Stanley Tam, his defining moment was June 15, 1955. He sold everything in his company that he had. He gave up his ownership of it, and he, he said, uh, and he, he actually, it, it took him, I want to say, I may have this number wrong yet, so don't quote me on it, but I want to say it's like 50-something lawyers that he had to go through before he finally found one that would draw up the legal document for this. But he sold everything he had. He sold over all his ownership, the CEO of his company, every bit of it to God. It took him like 50-something lawyers to finally find one that would actually do it. He's now given maybe like $11 billion away to, to other people because his business just kept going, getting so better and better. He, he started with just 51% of it, Ed. And then two years later, he redrafted the same document to 100%, sold over. Man, we are writing a book for others to read this year with this 2020 team. We're writing it. And I want to tell you, man, these glad I dids versus the wish I, wish I hads, they add up over time. Don't kid yourself. They add up over time. And the more you can say, the, I'm glad I did, and not the wish I hads, the more peace, the more joy, the more purpose, the more, the more peace you will have in your life. So, man, I don't know about you. But this week's a great week for us spiritually. Draw the line. What side of the line you on? What side of the line you on? All right, for those of you who are not believers yet, I hope you will become one. Let's talk football. What's the light you're seeking in football, man? Some of you say NFL. Great. That's less than 2% of all people ever play football get to do that. It's real talk. So what if that's the only light you're seeking? If that's the only end game? 
Or is it, man, to learn from this group of people that's been assembled for this 2020 team to be a better you, to be a better husband, be a better father, be, be a better friend, and when tragedy hits your family in 10 years, or that boss tells you you don't get the job in 10 years, or I, I, I interviewed five times for an OC job and got turned down all five. What if I'd quit? What if I stopped? So the light is not always getting the result you want. The light is about becoming something you want. So you do that for this team, you'll like the results come Saturday. You'll love the results come Saturday. So man, draw the line this week. Got it? Three claps for it. Good morning to you. Three claps for it. Well, Tuesday's a work day. And you have to condition your mind to be that if you want to be a great team and sustain success. You know, success and failures can both be your enemy. Because if you don't handle both, you know, you'll never have any consistency as a team. So I told you yesterday the story of, uh, or Sunday, Sunday, the story of uh, Stanley Tam who made a defining decision decided to draw the line with his company, his business, and, and all those things. And I want to just say to you this morning, if you go through this whole season without making at least one defining decision in your life, then we've wasted a lot of time. And what I am totally convinced of is that we, we, sometimes focus on the wrong things when we talk about these decisions that make up who we are. And I just want to challenge you. There's a story in the Bible of Mary and Martha. Jesus comes to their house. He brings some of his boys with him. Martha is all about, man, I got to get the house right. I got to get the food right. I got to get everything right. Mary is sitting just taking in the presence of, of Jesus. Martha comes to Jesus and says, man, I need you to get on her. I need you to change her. And Jesus says, no, she's probably doing what the priority is right now. You see, here, we're just like Martha. Martha was looking for uh, Jesus to change Mary when Jesus was wanting to really change Martha. And I think the things we focus on when we get hung up on me, my, and what, what it looks like for me and not so much, man, what is it that I can get out of whatever the situation is that's going to make me better? Because of the COVID, we didn't have a lot of time to have like our ultimate commitment service and everything. But man, I just want to challenge you, man. Place all the other stuff out of your mind. And for one season... Make a defining, if it's nothing else than this, make a defining decision that I am all about the boys in here. And it may not always look like what I want it to look like exactly. It may not always be exactly what I want it to be, but I assure you, you will get something out of finishing it the right way. You mark it down. I have never, ever, had a single player that decided, defining moment, I'm all in, and, and went through it all. Didn't always look like he wanted, but I've never had one come back to me and say, man, I regret that. But I've had tons of them say, man, I'm glad I went through it. And so I'm just asking you, man, let's remove, let's remove all the clutter and focus on what can I get out of this that will make me better and watch what happens in your life and with this team. Every single day that decision has to be made, every single one, that you are drawing the line that that team is a priority. That is a defining decision you can make and it'll change you and it'll change this team. Got it? Got a work day today. Three claps for it.